Welcome back. Before heading off to witness the start of the Caribbean Premier League T20 cricket tournament, representatives of the St. Lucia Zooks spoke with the local media to outline the future of the franchise. Captain Darren Sammy assures his fitness level remains at top condition as he looks to champion the team with a revitalized effort. Meanwhile, incoming coach James Foster gives surety that the necessary changes have been made to make for a better performing St. Lucia Zooks. More in this report. The Caribbean Premier League looks to bring the party atmosphere to the Caribbean, all whilst patrons taking resounding cricket matches. Local team St. Lucia Zooks, with a renewed drive, moving away from the name St. Lucia Stars and going back to St. Lucia Zooks, will be captained by son of the soil, Darren Sammy. He says the anticipated performance of the Zooks looks to bring in major crowd support when playing home matches. My goal is to, you know, come home, you know, four home games, five home games, you know, um, and, and look to go out and, and, and win them and dominate at home. That's why you see when you play in Trinidad, the, the stadium is, is painted red because Trinidad have had the, the track record of performing really well at home. So no pressure on myself and the coach and the players, but uh, that's what we have to do to get the St. Lucians to come out and, and, and wear the blue. And, and Barry, you just have to um, get the merchandise ready because we come in with some fire this year. Meanwhile, coach for St. Lucia Zooks, James Foster, says preparation leading up to the matches have been grueling for the men on the team. We've had a camp that's gone really, really well. Um, we had a little disruption with the, um, with the few guys flying in um, with that potential hurricane, which ended up missing us. So a few flights got missed. Um, so they, you know, a few guys came a few days later, but we've worked exceptionally hard here. We've had, I reckon, probably a good five days um, gradually, the squad got bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and as Darren touched on earlier, um, talking about the squad, I probably knew around about half, three quarters of the players through seeing them on TV, playing against them, um, coaching against these players. And a few, and you know, that other quarter I wasn't, I wasn't overly aware of, but watching them play in practice, and we've had a practice game, scenario session, I'm incredibly impressed and the interesting thing is myself and Darren we've we've got some hard work to do in terms of <laughs> picking that 11. Um, it's not a throwaway line, it's not a standard throwaway line which you might get at the start of a tournament or a start of a season. It's, it's going to be difficult. We're going to have a, a lot of disappointed cricketers in that team who probably deserve to be playing um, but unfortunately, that's the game, that's sport. The management and officials were very tight-lipped as to the past franchise management, opting to not take questions regarding the matter. The only answer regarding the matter came from Minister for Tourism, Dominic Fady, who insists the team is now solely focused on moving forward. We are very pleased with the new um, management now. The team is being run by CPL. Um, we believe that our monies are going to be well spent this year. And I think it's a good setup that is going to bring a very um, ethical structure. So we're good. The St. Lucia Zooks are set to play five home matches, which will include taking on Barbados Tridents on Friday, September 20th, Trinbago Night Riders on Saturday, 21st September, St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots on Tuesday, 24th September, Guyana Amazon Warriors on Wednesday, 25th September, and Jamaica Talawas on Friday, 27th September. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalfred. The recent achievements in the sporting world by young athletes have not gone unnoticed by Prime Minister Alan Shastney. He praised the valiant efforts of several athletes in different sporting disciplines for securing various top-tier positions within tournaments. The Prime Minister, alongside Minister for Tourism Dominic Fede, alluded to the island being able to craft more exceptional athletes, similar to the likes of Darren Sammy, Laverne Spencer and Johnson Charles. Solange Alfred tells us more. The island is looking to kick into high-gear sporting programs aimed at athletes of an exceptional caliber, with the soon-to-open National Sports Academy. Minister for Tourism Dominic Fede, during a press conference aimed at charting the way forward for St. Lucia Zooks, says the developmental nature of sports and the benefits it can hold for any small developing state is substantial. One of the backbones or the foundations of the development of any country is to have a very, very strong sporting culture and to have very strong sporting athletes. 
And in order to do so, you need a strategy. Um, and, and part of that strategy by us, uh, you would have seen us unveiling a comprehensive uh, sports development program in advancing our infrastructure island-wide. Um, if you uh, go around the island, you will see a lot of work that is taking place to improve a lot of our fields. Some of them are going to be in AstroTurf and so on. So there's a big transformation that is taking place all over St. Lucia. Um, what is chief among them is also the introduction of the uh, transformation of the Groselay Secondary School into a sports academy. This will allow um, young sporting athletes to uh, really pursue their education and while doing so at the same time, uh, they can have a very structured training program. So that school would be the specialized sports schools. The young athletes who have been giving their all to the sport they love received acclaim and recognition from Prime Minister Alan Shastny, who spoke briefly at the St. Lucia Zooks press conference. When we see the success of our windward um, team, we saw the success of our under-15 football team. Um, I was very pleased with the performance of my, uh, the girls of the under-17 in football. Uh, and two days ago, we saw that our um, volleyball, both men and women, have done extremely well. Um, and also, I saw my netballers um, won the, um, the, the championship as well. As well. So Lucia is on a, a path of champions. And I think that we're starting to realize our talent. And we're very lucky that we have Darren here captaining this team. And I'm looking forward to your support and be assured of my government's full support in making this thing happen. Fiddy says the development of the sporting world on Ireland has the potential to create outstanding athletes. We've had Darren, we've had Johnson, but what we've seen in St. Lucia uh, with, with this sport of cricket and other sports as well is you sporadically get a star. And had it not been for Darren's own um, effort and his own tenacity and commitment, it would have been very difficult for him to accomplish what he has based on our investment, based on the programs that we have, based on the lack of competition. We just don't play uh, enough cricket. And so what we're trying to do with this initiative is to work with all stakeholders to ensure that we can improve that situation so that we have a more deliberate effort in turning out more Darren Sammies, more Johnson Charles. Uh, there, there's so much talent that if Darren and I had a conversation, we would go back to the days of people like Champere from Labrie, who really should have played for West Indies. And the list is long of St. Lucian players who have had exceptional talent, but just did not have the backing of strong academies, strong development programs behind them to get them to the next level. The expressed hope of the government officials is to use the Sporting Academy as the first step towards ensuring the advancement of sports and athletes island-wide. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalfred. The apiary industry has been identified as having great financial potential. Export St. Lucia and the Ministry of Agriculture, with assistance from the Compete Caribbean, have initiated a plan to develop and grow the industry. Export St. Lucia, along with regional business support systems and private sector businesses, were the beneficiaries of a cluster development training program by Compete Caribbean. The training was designed to increase the capacity of the attendees towards the development of clusters in industries that showed the potential to benefit from clustering. Subsequently, Compete Caribbean issued a call for proposals for cluster development programs that they would fund if successful. Export St. Lucia, being the executing agency, coordinated the submission of two proposals with assistance from the Ministry of Agriculture, SLBS, NCPC, ICA, SLCSI, beekeepers associations, cooperatives, cocoa growers associations, and the OECS. The projects were evaluated by two investment panels that deliberated which proposals would be funded. A few months ago, Compete Caribbean put out a call for proposals and also a call to train um, agencies um, around the Caribbean in development of clusters. Um, Export St. Lucia was contacted and um, the Ministry of Agriculture and together they put a list together of persons that um, they thought 
um, would benefit from the training. As a healthy alternative to sugar, honey is used by health-conscious individuals. It is used in treatments from massages to facials. The byproducts of honey as well are also very valuable. We have been trying for quite a while to diversify the agricultural industry and also there is um, a call and um, a, a, a growth in the demand for raw honey around the world, especially by health conscious persons who are looking for a healthy alternative to sugar for sweeteners. And also honey is used um, very widely in the cosmetic and also the health and wellness industries. Beekeepers and cooperatives say that they are eager to get the ball rolling on the implementation of the cluster development project and that the various agencies are spearheading the initiative. They say they look forward to the success to be derived out of the project. I am Jaco Wooding for Hot 7 News. Whilst plans to upgrade the Castries market are still underway, workshops are being held to ensure that vendors are properly equipped to utilize their new environment. Dr. Lorraine Nicholas, project manager of the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project says, progress has been noted. The Ministry of Tourism, through the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Program, will support the upgrade of the Castries market and its surrounding areas. As part of the initiative, the project has begun a series of workshops aimed at building the skills of vendors in the city centre. Target areas include product development and marketing, product presentation, business development and customer relations. The workshops will enhance vendor understanding of trends and evolution in the tourism industry and how the changing needs of tourists will impact the future of the Castries market. Under the OECS Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, one of our fundamental aims is to optimize or to increase the visitor spend. So the idea is for a visitor coming to St. Lucia not to only leave a physical footprint but also an economic footprint. Now the market as you know is arguably a major attraction with tremendous potential for increasing visitor spending cash trees and the idea is to bring as much business to the market as possible. Now as we know the government is in the process of improving the infrastructural element of the market but it would be a shame if concomitantly the capacity of the vendors who are expected to utilize this facility is not also enhanced or improved. The project seeks to instill the importance of customer service to vendors when dealing with customers as well. Rich, engaging interactions with customers are the key to customer satisfaction and can encourage customers to return. Dr. Nicholas says that vendors need to understand that the age of social media is upon us and online reviews are impactful. So one of the things that we did is to expose the vendors to a tool called TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor is an online platform where persons who visit any destination or attraction can go online and basically tell the world what their experience was. And so we introduced the vendors to this platform and showed them some of the reviews that visitors who had just visited their booth just a few days or weeks ago had to say about them. And they were so amazed because the vendors because the visitors were using words such as the vendors are exploiting them, they were giving specific examples. The project will conclude the third vendors workshop on the 11th of September and encourages individuals to take advantage of the opportunity. I am Jaco Wooding for Hot 7 News. It's now time for the sports news with Tennyson Glasgow.